Hello and welcome. My name is Daniela Maglioni and I am a school psychologist and a national senior clinical consultant with Pearson Clinical Assessment. Many of you have viewed our live webinars that show how to use QGlobal to access digital materials and administer assessments in telepractice settings, and we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your attendance. We have received feedback from many asking if QInteractive can be used to administer tests remotely as well. The purpose of this short video tutorial is on the use of QInteractive for teleassessment. At this time, I would like to highlight the fact that the telepractice information on Pearson's website is intended to support professionals in making informed, well-recent decisions around remote assessment. This information is not intended to be comprehensive regarding all considerations for assessment via telepractice. It should not be interpreted as a requirement or recommendation to conduct assessment via telepractice. Professionals should remain mindful too. Follow their own professional best practice recommendations and respective ethical codes. Follow telepractice regulations and legal requirements from federal, state, and local authorities, licensing boards, professional liability insurance providers and payers. Develop competence with assessment via telepractice through activities such as practicing, studying, consulting with other professionals, and engaging in professional development. Professionals should also use their clinical judgment to determine if assessment via telepractice is appropriate for a particular examinee, referral question, and situation. There are circumstances where assessment via telepractice is not feasible and or is contraindicated. Documentation of all considerations, procedures, and conclusions remain a professional responsibility. With that being said, today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Laura Moreno, an educational consultant here at Pearson Clinical Assessments. Laura will be covering the key components needed for Q Interactive and how these differ slightly when using Q Interactive for teleassessment. Laura? Thank you, Daniela. Hi, everyone. Let's take a look at Q Interactive and review how this platform could be used in a telepractice setting. For anyone new to this platform, Q Interactive is Pearson's comprehensive digital system that uses two iPads to administer and score assessments. Here we can see an example of using Q Interactive in a traditional face to face setting where one iPad faces the practitioner providing the ability to control stimuli and score responses, and the second iPad, we refer to as the client-facing iPad, faces the examinee, allowing them to view and respond to the test stimuli. In a telepractice setting, however, where the practitioner and the examinee are in two different locations, both iPads would be placed in front of the practitioner, and the client-facing iPad would need to be shared with the examinee via a teleconferencing platform, allowing the examinee to see and respond to the test stimuli. Here we can see a list of tests currently available in Q Interactive. In addition to the test shown here, the Wyatt 4 is scheduled for release in August, and the Self Preschool 3 is scheduled for release in November. Both of these tests will be available on the Q Interactive platform as well. All right, let's talk about administering an assessment through Q Interactive in a telepractice setting. First, I'm going to provide you a brief overview of this process, then I'll discuss each step in more detail, and finally, share with you a few pictures demonstrating this setup in practice. As an overview, the workflow for the practitioner would be to connect with the examinee using a teleconferencing platform, share the client-facing iPad on screen to the examinee, Utilize a third camera at the examinee's location to view pointing and written responses, and fully capture the examinee's responses on the practitioner facing iPad throughout the assessment. Now, as there are many new components involved in this process, I recommend thoroughly practicing the administration and scoring of each test battery that you provide in this new format prior to assessing a student or a patient for the first time. Alright, let's discuss each step here in more detail. 
Step one for this process is connecting with the examinee via a teleconferencing platform, which allows you and the examinee to both see and hear each other clearly, and also allows you the option to share your screen. After connecting through a teleconferencing platform, step two is to share the client-facing iPad with the examinee. This step can be accomplished in a variety of ways. Today I'm going to review two options with you, which are to either use a mirroring app or to join the teleconference from the iPad as a presenter. First, let's talk about using a mirroring app. If you're not familiar with this process, a mirroring app is an application that allows you to display the iPad screen on your computer screen. Reflector 3 and Mirroring 360 are examples of mirroring applications. As a note, these software examples are for reference purposes only. To provide a more concrete example of a mirroring app for anyone new to this process, but is not intended as an endorsement. Now, once the image shown on the client facing iPad is being presented on your computer screen, you can then select the option within the teleconferencing platform to share your screen, and that would allow the examinee to view the test stimuli. As a note, the visual stimuli on the examinee's screen should be at least 9.7 inches measured diagonally and should not be obstructed by the examiner or examinee's faces displayed in the teleconference. Similarly, presenting stimuli on extremely large screens has not been examined, so the same precaution applies. Okay, so mirroring your iPad is one option for sharing the client-facing iPad with the examinee. A second option would be to join the teleconference from the client-facing iPad and then select the option within the teleconferencing platform to share your screen directly from the iPad. To accomplish this, you would need to use two email addresses to join the teleconference. The first email address is used to log in to the teleconferencing platform on your computer and create the meeting. Then you would send an invitation to your second email address to join the meeting. On the client-facing iPad, open a web browser to access the second email account and then join the meeting by clicking on the link provided in the invitation. At this point, you would be logged in as the host of the meeting on your computer and as a participant on the client-facing iPad. Then, when you're ready to begin the assessment, on the client-facing iPad, you would select the option within the teleconferencing platform to share your screen in the meeting. This will allow the examinee to view the test stimuli on the iPad. If you choose to use this option, be sure to mute both the microphone and the speaker for the client-facing iPad within the teleconferencing platform to prevent an echo from occurring. As a consideration, teleconferencing platforms have different functionality which may affect which iPad screen sharing option you use. For example, you can share your screen directly from the iPad as a presenter in Microsoft Teams meetings and Zoom meetings but this option is not currently available in DoxyMe. So if you are using DoxyMe, you might consider using a mirroring application for sharing your iPad screen. For specific mirroring application or teleconference platform recommendations, please refer to your professional organizations and applicable laws and regulations for guidance, as we do not provide recommendations for specific products. Okay, let's move on to step three which would be to utilize a third camera at the examinee's location to enable you to view the examinee's pointing and written responses. The examinee would join the meeting from their computer and also on a second web-enabled device that has camera functionality, such as a smartphone, an iPad, or a laptop. Positioning this device to allow you to view the examinee indicate their responses. For detailed guidance related to the use of a third camera, and or a facilitator when appropriate, as well as additional technical information related to video, audio, and lighting quality, and other considerations, please visit our telepractice website and test-specific guidance documents located on their respective product pages. For example, on the telepractice website under the Newsroom tab, we have a deep dive video specifically on third camera hack ideas. Step 4. As you administer an assessment, you will need to fully capture examinee responses on the practitioner-facing iPad, just as you would during regular testing. 
Also note, in order to utilize the recording feature built into Q Interactive for applicable subtests, you would need to hear the examinee through your computer speakers rather than headphones. This way, the practitioner facing iPad placed near your computer speakers would be able to capture the examinee's verbal responses for tests that use this recording feature. Okay, let's move on to step five, which is to practice. Practice using the teleconferencing platform and features available within the platform, including how to share your screen and how to stop sharing your screen. Practice sharing the client-facing iPad on screen and determine which method works best for you, whether using a mirroring app or joining as a presenter directly from the iPad. Practice explaining the setup of a third camera to an examinee and or a facilitator when appropriate. And finally, practice administering and fully capturing examinee responses for each test battery in this new format prior to assessing a student or a patient for the first time. All right, let's take a look at a few pictures demonstrating the setup in practice. Here is an example of a Q Interactive telepractice setup from the practitioner's point of view. In this example, the practitioner has connected with the examinee via a teleconferencing platform. The examiner is mirroring the client facing iPad to their computer screen and is sharing their computer screen with the examinee through the teleconferencing platform. The practitioner is also able to see the examinee via a third camera set up at the examinee's location. And finally, to the right of the computer, we can see the practitioner facing iPad, where the examiner is able to fully capture the examinee's responses throughout the administration of the assessment. Here we have an example from the examinee's point of view, where a third camera has been set up using household materials in a position that allows the practitioner the ability to view the examinee pointing to indicate item response selections. Now, I'll hand the presentation back to Daniela to discuss additional considerations and resources available. Daniela? Thank you, Laura. For specific product information, please refer to our guidance documents that are located on the product page as designated by this red box. These guidance documents contain invaluable information and address multiple factors to include suggestions regarding report writing, as noted on the slide. For example, the WISC-5 was administered via remote telepractice using Pearson's Q Interactive System, a mirroring app, and a facilitator monitored the administration on site using a printed response booklet during a live video connection using the, and then you would insert the name of the telepractice platform. In addition, you might want to make a comment indicating when a parent serves as a facilitator during unprecedented circumstances. Also, please remember to make a clinical statement in your reports about whether or not you were able to gather the examinee's best performance and any factors that may have led to this decision. If you have additional questions, please visit our website, pearsonassessments.com forward slash telepractice. Under the About tab, please scroll down to the bottom where you will find information regarding how to contact us. Thank you for your time.